Hey guys, this is the French fry. And as the name implies, it is small. So, it's a micro articulated streamer. And off the back here, I've got an eight millimeter micro shank. Up front, I've got a Gamagatsu B10S size number 10. The materials that make up this fly are extremely simple. I basically have barbed marabou out the back for the tail, also for the wing. And then I use a grizzly schloppen. And then for the lateral line, both on the back and on the B10S, I'm using a lateral scale from Hedron Flashaboo. As we move up front, I've got a half inch brush in white and then some small pseudo eyes. So, without further ado, let's get tying. Okay, so let's get tying. We're gonna start with an eight millimeter micro shank. This is from Fish Skull. And I'm using Vivas 100 thread, just putting down a nice quick base layer. And for Marabou, for the tail, this is MFC Bard Blood Quill. It's gray black. You could also use uh, standard Marabou as well. And just happen to have this MFC and I like the barring on it. So I'm gonna pull my plumes off to the side of the feather at a 90 degree angle and just pull back. And I'm taking about a one inch group of material off the side and I'm going to end up just using the tips themselves as you can see it becomes very wispy and very fine and I only want between a quarter and three quarters of an inch going off the back itself so I'm going to put it in and wrap back on itself and in order to cut the materials off I'm just going to twist bring my scissors right down nice and close and then clip them off. Okay, so that is good, but I need quite a bit more for a tail. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, grab my plume, pull the materials out at a 90 degree angle. Got about the same amount that I'm preening off, so it's about an inch or so. And I've got the materials all lined up. You can see how it makes the tips all go nicely together. And that first group I put on the right side of the shank and the next I'm putting on the left. And that looks good. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna twist the materials in my finger so I can get nice and close with my cut. You can see how it allows you to get down there. And that looks pretty darn good. I think I'm gonna do one more group so again, I'm bringing the materials out at a 90 degree angle, pinching, and I've got my tips all aligned, or at least mostly aligned, and I'm just gonna use these to go right across the top because I did left, right, and now I'm just gonna do center. So I did a couple loose wraps, pulled them right back up on top. If you saw, they kind of slipped off to the side, and exact same thing, I'm just gonna twist, the marabou, and that looks nice. Okay, so the materials are in place, which is great. Next, I'm gonna put in a little bit of wire. This just happens to be uh, ultra wire. It's extra small, you could use small. All I'm gonna do, this is gonna help keep my schloppen in place, my grizzly schloppen, which I'll put in in just a second. I just folded that wire over on top of itself, which will keep it slipping out. And that looks good. As I mentioned, I'm gonna use Grizzly Schloppen. This is just a, a neck that I got at a show. Dirt cheap, like five bucks in a bin. Doesn't have to be a fancy piece of Schloppen. And next, I'm just looking for the feathers to be about a quarter of an inch in length. I'm gonna Green them so they're back out of the way and just come in and clip. And a little bit of a, a triangle. Makes it easy to tie in. Looks good. Got 
that random feather hanging out out front. It's not going to hurt anything, but I'll just pull it back, get it out of the way. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is use my Hedron lateral scale. This is the salt water size. So if you're looking, there are two different sizes. Salt water is obviously the larger of them. And I'm going to tie it in. And I see I've got a couple materials sticking out front. I'm just going to hit them real quick with the lighter, get them out of the way. Now the eye is nice and clear. I'm going to come back to the front, secure everything down, and next I'm going to hit it with a little bit of Zappa Gap because I don't want that lateral scale moving anywhere. This is Zappa Gap in medium, by the way. Any super glue will do. And I'm just going to wrap, taking my time, come down, nice sequential wraps. If you go over a little bit, that's just fine too. Three, four. Now, I'm just going to come behind it twice. Keeping those feathers, trying to keep them from getting in there and come in front twice. Everything's locked in there. Pinch that. Keep those barbs free. Good. Okay. I'm gonna hit a little more zap across the top. The reason I do this is because as I wrap this feather up, because the lateral scale creates such an incredibly slippery surface, if I don't do this, I find that the feather slips and it just drives me crazy. So you can notice I tried to go over the top of the hook with the feather. It did not want to go that way, so I just changed course and came back. And I'm going to take my time wrapping. I want those feathers to come out at a 90 degree angle. They look good. Just think like a micro bugger. And that looks great. I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to come behind once. And I'm going to come behind twice. And I'm kind of taking my time here. I'm letting that super glue kind of lock things into place. Coming in front once. Twice. Now I'm going to come in and just clip that. Okay, looks good. Next, I've got my ultra fine wire. Now I'm just gonna take my time here, come up and you'll notice I'm doing a little bit of a zig and a little bit of a zag. Again, just trying to get between those feathers, keep them so they're out at a 90 degree angle. Of course, some are gonna get trapped down that's okay, but the majority are locked into position. Okay, looks good. Just gonna wrap that wire around my thread a couple times. You notice it popped off, but that's not a big deal. I had it wrapped around. And now I'm just going to come back with my medium zap again. Hit my thread. And then our tail is done. You notice I won't do a half hitch. I find that by just hitting it with a little bit of glue, keeping everything out of the way, it's perfect. So two wraps. Come in with my razor blade. Done. Now, the last thing I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to hit everything lightly with my Velcro, trying to get whatever random trapped materials there are 
out, but you can see the majority of the feathers themselves are sticking out at a 90 degree, degree angle, and that uh, flash of boo is just burning through. It looks great, and wait till you see when it gets wet. Okay, so next, I'm gonna use my Orvis. This is super strong, mono, and it's 25 pound, just coming up through the eye here. Any mono will do, and just pull in a little bit, put a little tension on it, and that's the, the tail. Okay, so for the front hook, we're gonna use a B10S Gamagatsu, size is number 10. And because we're gonna be putting an eye on, we wanna make sure that we um, get that eye nice and secure. The best way that I've figured out how to do it over the years is by following um, Bob Clauser's suggestion. And so I recommend that you watch him. But basically what he does is he suggests that you put a bump on the back side of where the eye is gonna be. So you can see I've got that there. And then what I've found on these small hooks, just to make sure that everything goes exactly where you want it, is just to use a second bump right in front. I'm just using my Beavis 100 gel spun to do that. And as far as the eyes, I'm using pseudo eyes. They're small and white. So again, just following Clouser, I'm gonna Put it right on the side. Do six lashes on one side, come to the other, put it into position, and come over the exact same number of times on the side. Good. And now I'm just going to do a couple lashes down below. Okay, looks good. Gonna come in, got a little zap a gap. This is in thin. Just get that locked into position. Okay, grabbing my tail with the 25 pound mono. Just gonna put things right along the side. And as far as a distance out the back, I'm just looking for about two eye lengths. So that looks good. Just going to secure everything in the position, letting that mono go right up on top, which is good because I'm gonna use that mono basically to wrap back around and use it as another means to help hold those eyes in position. So coming right underneath. back to the very end, come underneath, got everything secure. Again, coming back up front, I'm gonna grab that zap a gap again and then just hit it. Everything is in there, which looks nice. Okay, so for the, the back, pretty darn easy. I'm just gonna use my Hedron Flashaboo again. That's the uh, salt water. And just going to come in real quick. Lay it down. Awesome. I'm gonna go right up to where the eyes are. Again, what I'm trying to do is create the illusion of that lateral line and this lateral scale is fantastic for doing that. Come behind it once, twice, right up front. Looks good. I'm putting some tension, popping it off. Okay, now I'm back to my Bard Marabou Blood Quill from MFC. Got a giant plume here. And I'm just going to pull those materials off to a 90 degree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a wing. So 
So I want my wing to come back so the tips just basically align with the, the eye of the shank. So I'm just gonna come up once, twice. Looks good. I am going to trim them off and I'll lock everything in position. Just do a simple crisscross, then back over, lock everything down. Looks great. And I'm going to build just a little bit more. Exact same thing. Pull those materials off at a 90 degree angle. I grabbed about an inch again. I'm just going to Pull the tips, get everything aligned, looks really nice. And I'm gonna pull them just a little bit shorter of the last bunch. Same thing, once, twice. Make sure everything stays on top. I'm gonna come in front, once, twice. I'm gonna clip. Double check. Sure things are on top before you latch everything down. Looks great. And I'm gonna do one more group right in front of that. Same thing, I've got my, my feather. Just grabbing those materials out, putting them in a 90 degree. There's about an inch worth there. And I'm gonna come right in front of those. Notice the tips are just going about halfway. And all I'm trying to do is just create a little bit of a, of a taper in such a small amount of space just by using those marabou tips to, to do that. Just did another crisscross coming in front. I want to make sure my feathers are on top. They look, they look really good. It'll show that lateral line. And then of course, from the underside, it'll show just that pearl, which is gonna be perfect. Okay, looks nice. The last part of this fly is going to use a streamer brush from Just Add Water. It's half an inch and the color is white. And I'm going to put the brush in. I'm gonna lash it down nice and tight. And I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming on this brush. And the reason why I, I trim here is because I found if I use the whole amount of the brush, it's too much. So I'm just clipping off maybe a 16th of an inch. Maybe just a small, small amount. Okay, I'm gonna pull those that brush back. Just trying to cover everything. Looks nice. I'm gonna come forward underneath. I'm gonna do an X on the top. Come forward. And now I'm gonna wrap right in front. one wrap and then we'll do our, our trimming and when we velcro everything it'll make everything stand up which should be nice so what I think you'll have been able to see is that I did a crisscross on the eyes themselves just to make sure that the materials are, are covered so make sure that the eye is covered Okay, so I'm coming around twice. I'm gonna come in front once, twice. I'm gonna use an old pair of junky Fiskars. Good. Pull everything back. Great, just want to make sure the materials are out of the way, so I'm using my bodkin just to make sure everything looks good. Before I glue it, I'm going to come in with my zappa gap. Just going to 
hit maybe half an inch of thread with the super glue. Try to keep those materials out of the way as they come up and through. Tighten everything down. Come back with my bodkin. Make sure that that eye stays nice and open. All right, now it's time for some trimming. So I'm gonna start going right around the sides. Just putting my scissors right along the side, clipping. Do a flat cut, even with the, the hook. A little 45 degree angle up. And then with this, I want it just a little bit higher than the marabou. I'm just trimming at a little bit of a, an angle. Now if we hadn't done the preliminary trim on the brush, we'd be spending a lot more time here getting everything trimmed. That little step just saves you a whole lot of time. Okay, just coming in with the Velcro. Okay, and last step, I'm gonna use two different markers. These are just some Copic markers. I'm gonna use the light one first, across the top. What I'm trying to do is to match the marabou feathers. And we always know that the body of a bait fish is always darker across the top. That looks nice. And now I'm just grabbing the darker Copics gray just to create a little bit of that barred look. All I'm doing is just laying it on the side of the material. All right. That's it. That's the french fry. Small little snack. Or any fish out there. Hope that helps you out.